Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to lesson seven on the ear. We have skipped from labeling the eye to now labeling the ear. So if you could look for the lesson seven and the outcomes there, we're going to get started. So today our goal is to label this diagram and talk about the structures and their functions. So first things up, we're going to talk about the ear in a couple different pieces. We're going to talk about the outer ear being the first part being the pina, so the lobe of your ear, essentially. Then you have your auditory canal, and then following that, your tympanic membrane or your eardrum or your tympanum it has lots of different names. Again, I'll go through the function of these after. We're just going to start by labeling this picture. Next, you come to what is called the middle ear. In your middle ear, you have three very, 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 very tiny bones called the ossicles. Now, I only care that you know that they're called the ossicles and that they're the tiniest bones in your body and they're found in your ear, but they do have names, malleus, incus, and stapes, or anvil, hammer, and stirrup, okay? They have a couple different names, but for this case, those are the three pieces, malleus, incus, and stapes, also known as the ossicles, and they vibrate in your ear. So that's how you spell ossicles. So label them on this diagram, but then um, don't worry about ever calling them those three names. Just refer to them as the ossicles. Also within the inner, or sorry, the middle ear, you have a little part just after the ossicles called the oval window. And on the other side, um, behind the structure that looks kind of like a snail shell, you have something called the round window. Now, both of these are not labeled on your diagram. You need to try and draw lines to approximately where you see them here on the diagram. Also within your middle ear, you have something called the eustachian tube. It's the part that is coming down from inside your ear. All right, we're going to talk about the inner ear the deep parts of your ear. So in your inner ear, you have something called a cochlea, the part that looks kind of like a snail shell. The line that's just below the cochlea, just put an X through, it's not pointing to anything. Uh, it just is there as a floating line, so you can ignore it. Above the cochlea, with the part that kind of looks like a rope, that's actually your auditory nerve. And then the part up above that kind of looks kind of like a fun little roller coaster ride perhaps, those are called your semicircular canals. So you'll notice that my labels have colors because I like to label things with colors. It helps me remember them. So you could do the same. But essentially when we refer to the ear, sometimes I'll refer to outer, middle, or inner, or I will talk about each structure individually. Oh, I forgot the vestibule. Oh my goodness, you guys. So the vestibule, that's the last one, is right at the end of the semicircular canals. It is not labeled in yours. I apologize. That's late. Uh, so please make sure that you also label the vestibule. All right, so let's talk about what all of these do. So in your notes, you have a structures, and now let's talk about the functions of each. So the pina is the external ear flap. It collects the sound and it directs it down to the auditory canal. The auditory canal's job is to carry the waves to the eardrum, or what we call the tympanum or the tympanic membrane. The auditory canal's job also amplifies sound to make it sound louder, okay? So those are some of the outer ear structures we've written down, so the pina and the auditory canal. Sweat glands inside your auditory canal are actually what produces earwax. And the whole point about having earwax is actually to stop invaders from getting into your ears. Because if you get invaders into your ears, your eardrum is a membrane that can be infected and you can have um, inflammation or you can have what you end up getting an ear infection, an inner ear infection or a middle ear infection, any one of those, or an outer ear infection. You can get all of them. But essentially, earwax is there to help try to prevent that. So the eardrum, or what we call the tympanic membrane, or as I've said earlier, the tympanum. It essentially is the separation between your outer ear and your middle ear. Um, and if you perforate it, meaning if you cause it to get a hole in it, you can actually lose your hearing. 
The idea behind the eardrum, think drum, think when you beat on a drum, it vibrates, okay? That's the same idea for our eardrum or our tympanic membrane, is when the auditory canal collects those sounds and, audit and amplifies those sounds, its job is to push it down and amplifies it and help it get help it get down to the eardrum. When it hits that eardrum and vibrates, the eardrum's job is to help um, pass it on and make it a louder vibration. So that's what your eardrum looks like inside your ear. Once the sound has hit your eardrum, your eardrum has a couple, it starts to vibrate, but it can't control how it vibrates. It just vibrates. So the middle ear or the ossicles, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes actually are very, very cool because they actually control if a sound is too loud, they will try to soften it. And if a sound is too quiet, they will try to amplify it. So the middle ear is actually air filled. There's no liquid in there. And the ossicles are really tiny bones that amplify and carry sound to the oval window. So, but as I've already said, not only do they amplify, they can soften. Okay. But we mostly talk about amplifying sound because we want to talk about how do you hear. So that's kind of important to say, well, we have to amplify the sound. So the three bones, again, I said are malleus or the hammer, incus, which is the anvil, and stapes, which is the stirrup. Do I expect you to know these three names? No, nope. ossicles is fine. Oops, sorry, went too far. <laughs> All right, so the middle ear or your ossicles are located here, here, and here. You can kind of see them here. Very, very, very tiny bones. So what happens is, is when you get an amplification of sound from the eardrum along the three ossicles, stapes, the final one, will strike the oval window. And the oval window is just located just behind it. So if you see here, it's located right back in here. You'll notice it's attached to this piece back here, which is known as the cochlea or the start of the cochlea. The smaller, um, it's smaller than the eardrum and it too is there to help amplify sound. The round window, which if we're looking back at this picture, is malleus incus stapes. Round, oval window is back here. Round window is actually back in here. So the round window's job is as stapes moves into the oval window, the round window's membrane moves out and allows the fluid of the inner ear, okay? It allows this movement of fluid. So the cochlea has these things called hair cells in it. And when our hair cells move, it triggers us a nerve impulse, which then helps us hear. But this can't happen if that round window doesn't absorb the movement of the fluid. So it doesn't move and amplify sound, but it's there as more of a, not a rigid, but a little bit harder structure that just moves a little bit out when the fluid needs to move around. The eustachian tube is the part that comes down off the back part of your ear, it looks like. Essentially, it connects your middle ear to your mouth and nose. If you've ever gone up high into the mountains and you feel like your ears are plugged, so you plug your nose and you blow, that's the whole reason why you can do that, is you're actually equalizing the pressure between your ear and your mouth, okay? So it allows for the equalization of pressure between internal and external ears. It's why you feel that pressure when you dive deep into the deeper water, um, the eustachian tube is trying to balance. So buildup of liquids in the eustachian tube can actually cause deafness and poor balance. So they can actually get filled with fluid. So some kids, when they're very young, actually have to wear um, what they call tubes in their ears, which is essentially allows for their ears to drain properly. It's because their eustachian tubes are not supporting the drainage of liquid from there. And then you end up having dizziness, poor balance, or even troubles hearing. So again, when you are on a plane or scuba diving and you want to get your ears to pop, you equalize that pressure by plugging your nose and kind of blowing with your mouth closed and it helps equalize that pressure. So the inner ears, let's start with the ones that are kind of the loop-de-loops. Let's talk about the semicircular canals. Now the semicircular canals are filled with uh, fluid. So the inner ear, unlike the middle ear, the middle ear is a air filled, but your inner ear is, is filled with fluid. These sort of semicircular canals um, allow for the fluid to move around in a way that allows for us to detect body movement, or what we call dynamic equilibrium. So if you turn your head side to side, move it up and down, okay, that's actually everything that we can do like that 
and know where we are in the position of our body is because of our ears. The fluid rolls around in there and it touches hair cells. And those hair cells trigger a nerve impulse on something called the copula, which is a gelatinous mass, essentially think like jello. And within that is something called the ampullae that bends under the fluid pressure. Now, all of that is just a lot of information, but essentially the idea is you have hair cells that bend. So this guy right here, this is the copula, okay? And it bends moving this membrane here, which triggers the nerves to uh, send an impulse. And then that's how you can tell where your head is, is if you're shaking. It's also one of the reasons why when you go on really fast rides, you feel dizzy afterwards because the fluid is moving around and your body has to equilibrate again. So the vestibule, which is just located just below the semicircular canals at the base, connects the middle ear to your oval window. And it contains two separate sacs, the utricle and the saccule. And it provides information about where your head position is. And this we call static equilibrium. So when we move our head up and down, up and down, like we're nodding, yes, that's static equilibrium, knowing where our head position is. It also contains hair cells and what we call ear stones or autolysts. Some people's autolysts can actually crystallize, which causes them to have massive, can be caused painfulness, and it can actually cause them to have um, dizziness all the time, even when they're not doing anything. It's quite crazy. These hair cells and ear stones are embedded in the membrane that is right inside your uh, utricle and saccule, okay? And that's how you can tell if you're nodding your head yes or no, okay? That's how your body knows, is it uses these hair cells to send nerve impulses. The cochlea is the one that I really want to get into because the cochlea is the main reason why you hear. If you've ever heard of cochlear implants, it's because cochleas are the parts that help you hear. Cochlear implants fix that cochlea that may not be working properly for people who are suffering from deafness. It kind of looks like a snail shell. Okay, and it contains four rows of very specialized hair structures and they're anchored to something called a basilar membrane. What ends up happening is once the sound hits the tympanic membrane and passes through the ossicles and hits the oval window, it gets sent into the cochlea where there's liquid. That liquid moves over hair cells and depending on how far down the cochlea it goes, it interprets those wave cells and then converts them into nerve impulses. So. That is outer, middle, and inner. And again, these are the different structures. And you will have a drawing quiz with structure and function coming up shortly.